Hello everyone and welcome back. So in this one, we're gonna try another problem and in specifically, it has a process. Oh snap, a process, yes. So what do we have? Well, we have a piston cylinder device. Okay, if I go ahead and draw it. It contains 0.15 kilograms of air. Um, initially at two megapascals. Okay, M equals this, P equals two megapascals and a temperature of 350 degrees Celsius. There is first expanded isothermally to 500 kilopascals. Okay. Why am I drawing this backwards? Because I don't usually draw it like this, but I want to show you how you could do things like this. So it expanded, it's got some bigger volume, and the pressure is now equal to 500 kilopascals. Then compressed polytropically, Okay, it went down a little bit. Add the constant pressure to the initial state. Wait, oh, um, to initial pressure, okay. So it's gonna be back to P equals two megapascals so because that's now the initial pressure. And then finally it goes to the initial state again. So I don't even need to draw that. I can just say it's going here. Okay, so I had isothermal right here polytropic right here. And then the last one is a constant pressure process. So if you write it out like this, if you draw the pictures, you can actually have a good idea of what you need to do from one state to the other. You don't have to do this. I'm just showing you that you could do that and have an easier time. Um, do I do that? Often I'll do something slightly different. What I'll draw is what's called a process diagram. It's something you see a ton in your um, applied thermal classes. And we see it somewhat if you go into like propulsion, the later um, aerodynamics classes. So what I would do is I have a PV diagram right here. I have some state. And it says the first thing it does is isothermally expand. Okay. So if it's isothermally expanding, it's going to go down something like that. Then there is a, um, a polytropic compression. So it's gonna go up like this. And then finally a constant pressure process like that. Okay, so this right here is going to be the work. I should say work boundary here, I should say work net. And one interesting thing is I already know that this is going to be negative. If you're wondering how I know, it's because that is the expansion. And that is the compression. And since the top line is compression, that means I have more negative work than I have positive work. So this is how I typically do when I'm drawing it. I like to draw these diagrams. You don't have to do it though. Find the way that works for you. Okay, with no further ado, let's get right to it. So the first thing we do is we expand isothermally. And I put my picture in the way, so I'm gonna get rid of it. And so we know our boundary work for an isothermal expansion is my initial pressure and volume times the natural log of my change in volume. But I don't have the volume, so we're gonna to need to get those. Now, air can almost always be counted as an ideal gas. And so we can use our ideal gas relation to help us there. So since I have the mass, since I have the temperature and the pressure right there to begin with, I have enough to find that very first volume. So I calculate it. This is just my mass, my specific gas constant, my temperature in Kelvin, make sure you convert, and then my pressure, which I converted to kilopascals. For the units I'm using here, if I want everything to pop out right, I need to have it in kilopascals. Okay, now if I look at my second state, I've got a pressure, but what is my temperature? Well, it's the same temperature because it's an isothermal, isothermal expansion, which means the temperature doesn't change. So that really helps me there. Okay, now using this, this is just my ideal gas law again here, gave me this. Using my two volumes, this is volume one, this is volume two, I now have enough information that I can start plugging everything in and get my boundary work. My boundary work comes out to be um, just 37.2 kilojoules. So that is how much has been produced. It's positive because the expansion means it's doing work for me. I like that. I want it to do work for me. 
The next thing is polytropic compression. So I've got this equation for polytropic compression. I need pressures and volumes again. The exponent was given, so I know that it's equal to 1.2. Okay. My question is, well, what is my pressure 3? Well, that's also given the problem statement. These are word problems. They're not always great for everybody. But it says it's go down to the initial pressure. So pressure 3 is also going to be 2 megapascals. But not too much of a trouble there. Now, the one thing I don't have is the volume at the end. So I need to change, figure that out right now. So how are we going to do it? Well, we have a lot of information already. It hopefully won't be too terrible. Now, I know from our um, polytropic process that P, pressure, times volume raised to that exponent is a constant. It doesn't change. And since I know the pressure at the beginning and the end, and I know the volume at the beginning, I can find out what the volume at the end is. So I plug everything in. My pressure, P2, times my volume, which we calculated earlier, raised to the exponent of 1.2, is equal to my pressure, P3, times my volume, 3, raised to the exponent. And when I solve for that, I get my volume, 3, is equal to 0 point, sorry, 0 0.0169 meters cubed. And that takes a work of negative 34.8 kilojoules to compress it that way. You can already see that it takes a lot of work to do that. Most of our work that we produced is already gone. Okay, the last one was a constant pressure process. And so it has a very easy equation. It's simply equal to my pressure for that process times the change in volume. We already have all our volumes because we calculated them all. We already know what our pressure is. If we just plug that in, we get negative 6.97 kilojoules, which means that my overall work, my net work for this process is negative 4.6 kilojoules. That means it takes work to make this process run, okay? It takes work to keep it running. Instead of it producing work so it keeps itself running, I have to keep it running. We don't want this. Now, Depending on what this is doing, maybe it's for a refrigerator, some cycles aren't meant to produce power. They're meant to do something. They're meant to move heat from one place to another. And so this could still be doing something very valuable. It's just not producing power as it does it. So make sure you remember that. Okay, now the biggest thing I want you to take from this is these are some very big problems. You're gonna run into big problems before, um, after this point. And I really want you to be thinking about how am I going to do note keeping? How am I going to do it? If it works for you to write a picture, draw a picture. If it works for you to draw a diagram, draw a diagram. If it works for you just to meticulously write out M1, P1, T1, P2, and go through it that way, that's fine. But find out how it works for you. I usually say that some sort of diagram or picture is usually helpful. I don't care if you go from one box to another box to another box, and you just label what the arrows are, like this is isothermal, this is polytropic. You know, that's fine too. Just have something that's going to help you with that note keeping and you'll succeed. Thank you all so much. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.